Back in 2018, Marvel Spider-Man released on the PS4, and it was universally loved, resulting in many Game of the Year nominations. Now, two years later, Spider-Man is back, but this time Peter is taking a back seat, and Miles Morales is our new hero. Here's 20 things you need to know about Marvel Spider-Man, Miles Morales. Hello and welcome to PlayStation Grenade. Let's break down as much info as we can about this. The first thing of note, even though Marvel Spider-Man Mars Morales is being endorsed as a PS5 launch title, it's also here on PS4. So don't worry if you were frantically trying to get a PS5 and failed, or if you simply have no plans to move to the next generation yet. All is good. Spider-Man Miles Morales is on current Gen 2, but there are a few technical limitations we should cover, but we'll do that in a little bit. Let's start with the story. Just over 12 months have passed since Peter's heroics in Manhattan. We are back this time, it's past autumn and the winter season is kicking in. Miles is training under the tutorage of Peter Parker to be the second Spider-Man and slowly uncover his abilities. Peter is called away on a photography mission in Sincaria, leaving Miles to defend the city alone. Of course, things don't stay calm for long and the bad guys of the story are revealed. The evil Roxxon Corporation are battling against a new faction known as the Underground, led by the villain The Tinkerer. If you haven't heard of The Tinkerer, here's a few things of note. He was one of Spider-Man's original enemies in the 1960s, but changed many times over the years. Right now, he's seen as the brilliant technician and inventor who comes up with the weird and wonderful weaponry used by a ton of Spider-Man's foes. In this version of Spider-Man, it looks like The Tinkerer is becoming more hands-on again and getting involved in the action instead of staying out of sight. He's not the only one though, of course other villains will be popping up, like Rhino, who is back to be the early game boss. I think it's important to make the point that Marvel Spider-Man Miles Morales is not a full length game, like the 2018 outing. Insomniac have made it very clear and tell us to think of this similarly to Uncharted The Lost Legacy, which was a standalone edition which did not require the original game to run. So effectively, this is way more than DLC, a standalone story. The assumption is Miles' story will take about 15 hours to complete, with collectibles and random events altering that time frame for many gamers. This leads on to my next point. There are two versions of the game. The standard edition is for those who only want Miles Morales in their life and nothing more, but the second version should grab your attention. And that's due to it being bundled with the original game, which has been remastered. And strangely, that includes a new Peter Parker looking Whoa. like a chubby Tom Holland. But that's not the main focus here. This ultimate version is bundled with all the DLC expansions from the original game. Let's be honest, most of us do not pick up DLC for games. Did you play it? Some of us, me included, buy the DLC, but by the time it is released, we've moved past that game and onto new things. Sad but true. The reason why those DLCs are important is because they include early parts of Miles and his story arc. Without spoilers, something earth shattering happens to Miles in the 2018 game before tiny pieces of info are given out in the DLCs which build up to his moment in the spotlight. Those who are here for story should really consider playing the remastered story to get the full narrative arc for Miles Morales. Think of it this way, in 2018 Miles was running and hiding from Rhino, whereas in 2020 he's going head to head with the brute. It's pretty impactful. One thing I've noticed around the interweb is the claim that Miles is simply a reskin of the original game. Like we've already said, he has his own story arc, it's like a coming of age superhero story, and on top of that, Miles has his own animations, such as his swinging technique and his fighting style. So I think we can rest this to bed, this is more than a reskin. If you need more evidence, well check out Miles and his new abilities. If you've seen Into the Spider-Verse, which is low-key the best Spider-Man movie ever made, and I'll fight you in the comments if you disagree, Miles, Miles has two abilities like no other. Firstly, a Venom Strike. No, not the Venom you're thinking of, but Miles has faced Venom in the comic books. But let's stay on point here. Miles' version of Venom Strike is like bioelectricity which he can pass through with touch. The shock can simply stun the opponent, or with enough charge, it can take out a supervillain and even Peter Parker. 
Miles' second ability is a stealth camouflage, in which he becomes transparent and almost invisible. Luckily, his clothes become invisible too, that could be awkward. In game, this is a core mechanic which runs on a cooldown and is not endless. We can use it to reposition in a fight, for a takedown, or simply hide when things get too hectic. Miles is his own Spider-Man and fights his own way. Another returning element are those gadgets, which are pivotal to gameplay and replayability. We don't know too much about gadgets right now and how they impact Miles' fighting style, and that's probably for the best. Finding a new gadget and using it in battle is great fun. We have seen one though, the Gravity Well. Any ideas what this could do? I can't wait to find out. While we're talking about customising Spider-Man, another returning bit of brilliance is here. Miles is his own man, he has his own personality, his own heritage, and that's why he won't be wearing Peter's attire for too long. During your playthrough, you'll unlock Miles' signature black spider suit, but that's just the beginning. We've seen a hint to a futuristic suit, we've seen the crimson cowl and its hood, and the suit which is likely impossible to keep clean, the T-R-A-C-K suit, the track suit, get it? LOL. And then the suit which makes lovers of the Spider-Verse movie very happy. Here it is, he is wearing that exact suit from the movie. The animated style carries over and includes a new set of animations ported over to the video game. The thing which made me unbelievably happy is the animation style. Just like in the movie, the suit is animated on alternated frames, on the twos they call it, which is why it looks like it lags or moves differently. It's trippy at first, but becomes really lovable. Just another example of how much love is going into this game. I wasn't sure where to put this next point, as I don't know if this is a gadget or a suit. But there is a spider cat in the game. <laughs> he even has his own takedown moves to help out Miles. Look at his mask, cute little bugger. So now we have to get a little technical. Here's a few key differences between the PS5 and the PS4 versions of Marvel Spider-Man Miles Morales. Firstly, that overused word, ray tracing, is here. As you likely know, ray tracing is the way light illuminates a scene and impacts shadows and reflections. And that's not available on the PS4 version, it's a very heavy process. So if you need realistic puddle reflections, you should get out more. Now I mean you should play on the PS5. But even on the PS5, ray tracing comes at a cost. Let's fly through it. With ray tracing switched on, the PS5 version can still support 4K output, but only 30 frames per second. Compare this to performance mode, which gives us 60 frames per second and still at 4K, but that pushes aside the ray tracing element. Over on the PS4 Standard Edition, you'll get 30 frames per second at 1080p, and on the PS4 Pro, you can rock up to 4K and still hold on to 30 frames per second. I'm very keen to not make this too technical. Let's simmer it down. If you want 60 frames every second, you'll be forced to switch off ray tracing on PS5. A tough call for some. Other differences on the PS5 are primarily with load times. The crazy fast SSD in your PS5 can Thanos snap load times, whereas the PS4 version will obviously take a little longer. The PS5 controller will include haptic feedback, which is incredibly hard to explain, but ultimately, the game will be more immersive for those who have access to a DualSense controller. In tough moments, the triggers will fight back to simulate the on-screen struggles of Miles. It's pretty impressive tech. And there should also be a change in the audio on PS5. There's new audio tech in there, which is supposedly more well-rounded and directable, which mimics ray tracing and the bouncing of audio from surfaces. I haven't personally heard it yet, so I can't speak too confidently about audio. To be honest, I've been waiting 20 years for audio to be improved in video games. Is the PS5 the key to this? I suppose we'll wait and see. And finally, unlike the 2018 game, Insomniac have gone on the record to state we will only play as Miles in Marvel's Spider-Man Miles Morales. If you remember the original game, we occasionally played as MJ in stealthy missions, and we played as Miles to escape missions, and we even played as standard Peter Parker in some story missions. This time around, it's all about Miles. Oh, and one more thing, if like me, you've played the original on PS4 and want to transfer your save data to the PS5, it has been confirmed to be possible. No need to start again if you don't want to, which is useful to hear, isn't it? I'm still totally starting again, just to try out the new Peter Parker and what he looks like. Hello? Marvel Spider-Man Miles Morales is a bloody long title, isn't it? It releases on PS5 and PS4 on November 12th, although some of us will need to wait for the PS5 to release on November 19th to play the next-gen version. I'm sure I'll be hiding from spoilers all that week. 
I'm Adam from PlayStation Grenade. Thank you for sticking around this long. You're awesome. I'll uh, see you next time.